Rails and a Rails app can easily become very complicated as more and more logic is pushed into it. Fortunately, there are several refactorings available to help clean up complex models. There's an excellent blog post by Brian Helm Kemp that goes over seven such refactorings. Now, I've already covered service objects in episode 398, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at a different refactoring, which is extracting out form objects. It just so happens that most of the behavior in the user model here has to do with forms. We've got some custom virtual accessors here. We've got some validations and some callbacks and an association with an accepted nested attributes for, so we are able to uh, set the association attributes through the form. And we've got some virtual attributes here and uh, custom validations, and here are the callbacks. So if we can extract these out into form objects, we'll clean up this model quite a lot. Now, before we dive into refactoring, let's take a look at this application. Oh, it was important that we focus on improving the code of the app through refactoring, but not changing the outside behavior at all. So this will all stay the same. We have a couple of forms here. We have a signup form, which uh, accepts the user's details, along with profile details. So these uh, attributes are on the associated profile model. Let me fill these in real quick. All right, that looks good. And when I click sign up, it'll create a new user record for us showing us the details. And another form we have on this app is the change password form. So this requires we enter in our original password and a new password and confirm it, and then changing the password, that works. What's interesting about this is that we have two different forms working off the same model, a signup form and a form for changing the password, and they both look and function quite differently. So whenever you have this situation where you have multiple forms working with the same model but look and function differently, then it's a good indication that a form object can improve the code. Speaking of the code, let's dive into this passwords controller, which uh, handles the displaying of that change password form and the processing of it. So uh, when we're changing the password, we're actually setting this attribute on the user model saying that we're currently changing the passwords. It's almost like we're uh, telling the user model to go into a different state for this behavior. So this is another pattern to watch out for. If your controller is ever telling your model to enter in a specific state, it's a sign that maybe you should extract that state specific behavior into a separate class and handle it outside of the model. So let's take another look at the user model. And here we can see a pretty big separation of concerns. Uh, each line of code in here is either focusing on the signup form or the changing password form. Uh, all these accessors here are for changing the password, whether we're in that changing password state, or the old password and the new password. And uh, here we have many validations, which are only for if we are in that changing password state. And again, here we have a callback only for that changing password state. So let's get started with the refactoring and extracting this behavior out into a form object. I'm going to make a new forms directory here under app and really you could put it anywhere you want though. Let's call this a uh, password form. So this is just going to be a plain old Ruby class called password form. And what kind of behavior should we put in here? Well, my goal here is to have the controller interact with the password form object directly instead of interacting with the user object. So instead of uh, setting this user instance, let's call this password form and instantiate a new password form and passing the current user into it. However, this means in the view layer where we're displaying that change password form, uh, we can't pass the user into here. Let's use the password form object on the form for call. This means our password form will need to respond to each of these attributes and behave similar to a model so it can be passed to the form for call. Now in Rails 4, it will be quite easy to get a plain old Ruby object to behave like a model by simply including the active model model module. Uh, say that five times fast. Anyway, that's a quick way to make it compatible with Form 4. But in a Rails 3 app, we can get by with just including a few extra modules and defining this persistent method. So that's what I'll be doing here in our password form class. I'll just paste in the code to include the modules to make it compatible with Form 4. Now we can do the fun part, copying over the code from the user class. So uh, these accessors up here are just specifically for that form. So we can uh, copy those in here. And this changing password accessor we won't need anymore because that was to record that specific state, which this class is dedicated to changing the password. And so we have these validations, which are only for that changing password state. And we can uh, clear off this if condition here. And then we've got our callback, which only handles again the callback when we're changing the password, so we can remove that same if condition. And we need to copy over a few more things here. We got our uh, verify password validation, 
and our uh, change password callback. Now these will need to work a little bit differently because our authenticate method is defined on our user model, and so we can call that on user if we pass our user into the initialize method, which we're doing in the controller. We're passing in the current user when we initialize our form object. And when we're changing the password, that will need to happen on the user object as well. And actually the way this uh, callback works is that we don't really have the before update callback here because we don't know the state of our database or when we're updating it. So I'm going to trigger this method manually. All right, so we made some progress here. Let's visit our application and see if it works. Now I needed to restart my Rails app to pick up the forms directory. And now if I try visiting change password, I get that same password form. So that is rendering correctly. Let's view the source and see if anything changed. Now there is a, a difference in the name of these fields here. Instead of being under a user uh, prefix, they are now called password form. So it's going to be inside of a hash in our params called password form. So this is something we'll need to account for in our passwords controller when we submit the form. And actually I'm using strong parameters right now. You can see I'm calling uh, params require and permit here. And that is supplied by the strong parameters gem, which I have set up because this is currently a Rails 3 application. Now I covered strong parameters more in episode 371. Now one thing neat about form objects is that they often remove the need for strong parameters. So I'm actually going to delete this password params method because I'm going to pass in the uh, password form parameter directly and that'll be the hash of attributes that are submitted through the form. Now I still need to change the rest of this method so that we're working on a password form instead of a user. And then instead of calling update attributes, I'm going to call submit. I like to have that as the conventional method for form objects. So this means we'll need to define the submit method in our password form object. And I'll just define it down here. And this takes a hash of parameters passed in. Now in the submit method, we need to assign each of these parameters to the attributes of this object. So our original password will be the params original password and so on. All right, there we go. Uh, so here we're assigning each of the three attributes and assigning them individually like this may feel a little bit verbose, but it does prevent the need for using strong parameters or anything like that because we're just assigning each uh, value parameter directly instead of having to loop through the hash. So once we've assigned these parameters, we can uh, check if our object is valid. And this valid method is actually provided by the validations module up here. So we don't need to define that. Now, if we are valid, then we want to complete the uh, changing of the password, which we can do by calling this method. But because it's only one line, I'm just going to move it in line because it's pretty self-explanatory. And then I'll return actually true for the result, the response, and then return false if we are not valid. Oh, and one more thing, after we change the password, we need to save our user object. All right, so I really like this approach because it removes the need for that extra callback logic by just moving it in line after we do the validation check. And if we have a lot of attributes to set here, we could just easily make an attribute setter method that has all this behavior in it. Now let's see if this works. I'll try typing in an incorrect regular password and an invalid confirmation, and then we get those validation errors and we can uh, correct them. If I type in the right password, then it should work, and it does. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this refactoring. This behavior is all pretty specific to that password form, and our user model is slimmed down quite a bit. But what if we want to take this a step further and make another form object for the signup page? This may be taking form objects a little too far, but let's try it out and see. So I'm going to make a new form object. Let's call it uh, not user form because that is a little bit too abstract. Let's call it signup form. Now the reason I prefer not to call it user form is because that implies it would work for both creating and updating user records. But uh, this form object might only work best for creating user records because the editing of user records, if we had it, might behave and function differently. In general, it's a good idea to create classes for one specific purpose. And then if you find another class has a very similar behavior, perhaps we have an edit user form that has almost duplicate behavior, we can abstract out that behavior through refactoring later. So let's make this with the same uh, model behavior like we had before and copy over some of this user uh, details. So all these validations, I'll just copy them over. And also we have this on create option, which we don't need because uh, the signup form only deals with creating user records. 
And let's see what else here. We got our before create callback, which we're just going to trigger that method manually. Uh, we got accepts to nested attributes for which normally if you have a form objects, you're going to uh, just treat it as a single uh, form fields that you're working with, and then the form object is responsible for splitting those out into multiple models. So accepted nested attributes for usually isn't necessary with form objects. And then finally, we have our virtual attributes here and our callback method, which I'll just copy all these methods over to our signup form. All right, pretty good progress so far, but I'm not entirely sure how this uh, form object is going to interact with the controller. So let's go to our user's controller. And first, let's focus on the new action here, which is just creating a new user and building a profile as associated with it. And the reason this is necessary is because in the view, if we take a look at this, we're doing form for user, and then we have a fields for section for doing the nested attributes on the associated record. Now, because we're going to have a form object, this is no longer necessary because our view doesn't need to be concerned with which attributes go with which model. It just assigns them all to the form object. So let's use the same form builder object for these profile specific fields. And then at the top of the form for call, uh, let's use the uh, sign up form, which is passed in and use that for the validation errors as well. Now, because we're using a different object here for form four, it's not going to know that it, uh, to pass it to the user's controller. So we'll need to specify the URL option and say the user's path here. All right, the view's looking good, but we still need to set up this instance variable in the controller, so let's do that. Instead of assigning a user instance variable, we'll make a sign up form object. And we don't have to worry about building the profile because that'll all be handled inside the form. Now what we have so far will probably not work, but let's try it out and see. If I visit the sign up form, yep, I get this exception saying undefined method validates uniqueness of. So uh, the uh, active model validations don't support this method since it relies on a database lookup. Hmm, so we've got to do something different in our sign up form than this validates uniqueness of. And really, it would be better to add a database constraint for this to make sure that is truly validating the uniqueness and then you can rescue that exception if there is one. But uh, just for now, I'm going to uh, make my own manual validation that works similar to validates uniqueness of by just saying validate, uh, let's say verify uh, unique username. And just to save a bit of time, I'm going to paste in the code for that uh, manual validation. It uh, works really simple though. It just checks if we have a user with that username. And if so, it has that error message. So with that fixed, let's see if our form renders now. And we still get an exception, and this is undefined method username on signup form. So it's trying to access the attributes to display them in the form. Now there are a few ways we could accomplish this. We could do it the way we did with our password form, where we just make accessor methods for each of them. But we're going to be needing these attributes a lot, and there are quite a few of these attributes in this form. So having to manage them all directly like this is quite a bit of work. And instead, in this situation, I prefer to do just delegation, where we're just setting uh, the attributes on the user or profile records directly and then just delegating the accessors to those. So we can say uh, delegate, let's say username, email, password, and password confirmation to the user model. And let's do something similar for the profile, but that is the Twitter name, the GitHub name, and the bio, and that's going to be to the profile record. And actually, let me move this delegation down below here and this means we need to define a user and profile method that uh, sets up the records the way we want. So the user, let's just create a new user record and the profile, we can uh, create it through the user. So just call build profile on it. And actually this should go through that user method. And finally, the uh, accessor methods here, actually the virtual attributes for subscribed, this needs to go through our user object because that's where the attributes will be defined and set. And same for generating the uh, token. There we go. Let me try this out. And now the page renders without any errors. Yay. By the way, I have been using the browser a lot here to check if we've broken the application while refactoring, but normally you'd want to have a good test suite and rely on that while doing the refactoring. But that's a bit out of the scope of this episode. All right, now that we've got the signup form rendering correctly, let's handle the submission in this create action here. So this will build up a, a signup form like we did before. And I want to call submit on this and passing in the parameters. So that'll be the signup form parameters. However, let's say we don't like that parameter name and want it to be user instead. How do we customize that? 
This can be done by going back to our signup form and defining a class method in here called model name. And this should return an active model a name instance, which uh, we want to pass in this class as the first argument, nil as the second, which is a prefix, and whatever we want it to be called as the third. In this case, let's call it user, and that will uh, be what's determining the name of the parameters that are passed in through the form. Now that method is also what is used to determine the URL that the form is submitted to. So we can remove this URL option as well if we're naming it the same as our controller. Okay, so back in our controller, the form will now submit the parameters as a name user. So those will be passed in here and we can go through our form object whenever we need to reference the user throughout our controller. Now the last thing we need to do to get this working is define this submit method. And actually because we aren't using strong parameters here, we don't need this params method in the controller anymore. So this is kind of cool. We're simplifying both the controller and the model. Okay, going to the signup form, I'll define that submit method. And that will take the uh, params hash. And here we need to assign some parameters to the user and some to the profile. So the user attributes will uh, call params slice to extract out a hash uh, setting certain keys. So it'll be the same keys that we're passing up here in our delegate call, and we'll do the same thing for our profile uh, using these same attributes that are passed in through the form and delegating those uh, to uh, set them on that model. And then let's check if our record is valid, if our form is valid. If so, we want to generate the token. So that's that method defined down here. And if we generate it, then we can call user.save and profile.save and then return true, otherwise return false. Oh, and I just realized we need to handle the case of this virtual attribute, which to do that, we just set the uh, subscribed method to params subscribed. And that will go through and set the user's attributes. Behind the scenes, I went to our signup form and filled it in. So let's click sign up and try this out. And it does not work. We get an exception saying undefined method token. Well, oops, that's a simple error here, the generate token method. Uh, this token call here needs to be user.token to do that existence check. And I'll try this again and see if it works this time. And it does, yay. So with the refactorings we've done in this episode, our user model is left with only a couple lines of code. But is that a good thing? Well, I think the password form object was a good extraction, but the signup form I would probably only do in more extreme cases where we're trying to extract out as much as we can from the user model because there's so much complexity. One of my biggest issues is that the validations have moved entirely into the signup form, which uh, may not be an issue if the validations are specific to that single form, but usually uh, you want the data in your database to be consistent and have integrity. So if you ever create or update records, you always need to make sure to go through these form objects. In contrast, if we check out the validations in our password form, these are pretty specific to the form itself and not necessarily about the integrity of the user data, except perhaps the minimum length of the password. I'd probably just extract that number off into a shared constant or something. Overall, I wouldn't use form objects everywhere, but in certain cases like this password form, they can work really nicely. Now in this episode, I created the form objects from scratch, but there are several gems which can help you out. In uh, Brian's blog post, he mentions the Virtus gem, which can help manage the attributes. And you might also want to check out the Reform gem by Nextsetter. Uh, this provides a nice DSL for creating form objects. And that's all I have for this episode on extracting out form objects. Thanks for watching.